Hi, I'm Christopher Healy, author of A Perilous Journey of Danger and Mayhem, which is a book that has a lot of inventors and inventions in it. And here is my list of my top five ideas for inventions that do not yet exist. One thing that I can never do that I really wish I could do is to eat while I'm reading a book because you need more than two hands. When I'm reading the book, I have to put it down, pick up my sandwich and eat. It would be great if there was some kind of holder you could attach to the top of your book. Then while you're reading, whenever you want to, you could just, just lean up, take a bite and you're good. You're good to go, it solves the problem. Might not work for every sandwich. A meatball sub might be a little bit messy. I can see them, anything that's gonna square out the sides. If you're gonna have peanut butter and jelly, you wanna make sure it's not the drippy kind of peanut butter because then it's gonna ruin your book. But if you get a nice solid sandwich that's not too drippy, not too messy, problem solved. When I was a kid, one of the things that would drive me crazy was whenever my whole family would sit down to watch a movie together and then my mom or dad would get up in the middle of the movie and they'd have to go someplace. They'd have to leave the other room for who knows what and they're gone for five minutes and then they come back and they say, what did I miss? And then the rest of us, we have to stop watching so we can tell them what they missed and it was very frustrating. What we need is a TV show movie synopsizer, a little thing that could create a synopsis of just the part that your parents are missing. And when they come back in the room, if they say, what did I miss? You just hand it to them. I'm gonna keep watching the movie and they could figure out what they missed by reading or watching. I don't know how it would work, but it would tell them what they missed and you wouldn't have to. I have a dog. He is a big Labrador retriever named Duncan. He weighs 90 pounds. He is very lovable and very affectionate and he wants me to pet him all the time. And I love petting him, but I can't all the time, especially when I'm trying to work, when I'm trying to write new books and he has his big fuzzy head right on my lap. So what I need is a robotic dog petting hand that can just attach to my chair and then I can type and I could write my new books and the robot can just do this and pet the dog for me. And then I'd have a happy dog and um, happy readers because I, I get to finish my books. My son uh, really loved stuffed animals and he has lots of them. And when he was younger, he would want to sleep with all of them. And he would sometimes be like buried by a pile. We tell him you can't sleep with all of them, but then he'd have so much trouble choosing. Well, who gets to sleep with me tonight and who doesn't? And it was all a very Toy Story. Like, it will be sad if they don't get to. So what he would need, uh, what he would have uh, really benefited by back then would be to have a stuffed animal carousel that could kind of rotate around his bed and just every night drop off a new one. And he'd sleep with that one that night and in the morning he'd put it back on the carousel and it'd rotate around and he'd get the next one for the next night. That way he doesn't have to feel any guilt about which animal he's sleeping with that night. One invention that would benefit me a lot personally would be a robot to play video games with. I play a lot of games with my children. Um, they are much better than me and I lose all the time. So if I had a robot who was incredibly untalented at video games, it would let me finally know what it feels like to win. And I think I deserve that at least every now and again. So next time my kids would be like, hey dad, you wanna play some video games? I would be like, no, I'm gonna play with Mr. Bad Robot here so I can know what it feels like to win once in a while. Thank you.